works. Now, climate change needs funding. And as we have seen from Deal Room this morning, it's mostly actually in Europe, or half of it, are hardware fundings. And I'm coming from the digital world. SaaS was the flavor of the day. I guess after this market corrections from 30 times revenues to more like five times revenue, people are looking for something new. UVC, please come on stage from Munich. We have you with a family office, the Rag Stiftung, and you're also bringing a scientist from ETH, Lena. So I guess that's a perfect stakeholder alignment. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. One more time, please. So, welcome to our panel. We're discussing how to finance asset heavy climate tech. So, I'd like to welcome um, Friedrich Brodach. He's a senior investment professional in private debt and infrastructure sectors. He has long-standing experience in managing investment structures and is currently acting as COO and CFO of RSI Capital. RSI is a fully owned subsidy of RAG Stiftung, which is one of the largest endowments in Germany. And basically with RSI you're providing in your single LP structure solutions for innovative companies both on the equity side but also on the debt side. Um, I'd like to welcome as well Lena. Lena is a PhD researcher at ETH uh, Zurich, so a local. She's a, also a co-founder of uh, a crypto carbon rating institute, and she's doing research in the Green Fin project. Um, this project aims to investigate the role of the financial sector in accelerating the investment in low carbon technologies. So. Um, We'll talk about that later, but the project is a starting point also for um, targeted policy recommendations, if I got that right. So, great to have you here. My name is Benjamin. I'm a general partner of UVC. We love investing in tech. We do that already for a while, also in hardware. So, that's the main thing we do, but we also give a reception later today. So, we sponsor the drinks outside. Keep that in mind for later. Um, allow me to frame the discussion. So, in the past, Every time we've run into a stuff problem, we successfully have thrown fossil energy at it. So everybody knows that we have discussed about that all day. And, and we've been pretty good in putting venture capital into software plays and also consumer plays. But, but I think we're, we're aware that this will change. So the future will be tightly linked to companies and products that are linked to assets, to infrastructure. Um, and this driving force has to be funded. Now, Lena, the first question is, what is so different in financing climate tech to other technologies? So first of all, thanks for having me here on this panel on this exciting topic. So I would like to highlight two aspects with regard to the question. So the first one is that a large part of the financing for a low carbon world is needed for a low carbon infrastructure. And building startups and securing financing to provide low carbon infrastructure technologies is particularly challenging because of high upfront investment needs and longer investment cycles. But at the same time, our most recent research at ETH Zurich shows that um, the investment need in low carbon uh, infrastructure will be rising by 40% or more than 40% already in the very near term compared to the previous decades. And in there, power generation, electricity grids and storage, as well as rail infrastructure are particularly important. So this is the first aspect. And the second aspect is that um, low carbon infrastructure also differs to high carbon infrastructure with regard to the financing conditions. So one important example here is the higher capital intensity. So if you look at a high carbon power plant compared to a low carbon power plant, you see that for the low carbon power plant, the capex really dominate the share there. And for the high carbon power plant, OPEX play a much larger role. So this comes with higher capital costs for low carbon technologies, which is specifically complicated in a high interest rate environment as it is now. So we, we've learned that there, there is complexity around hardware. We've seen a couple of really promising pitches today, but all are linked to high financing needs. Now, Frederick, how does this work out with debt financing in the context for climate startups? How is that possible? Well, I think, you know, this is, well, thanks for having me first, uh, first of all. Um, I mean, the, 
we, the debt providers, are often the party poopers of the capital stack, right? So we, we are not there to, to dream big and to dream of uh, big development potential. We are unfortunately there to remind you that there is a risk, that uh, we will need to have some securities, um, and so on and so on. So um, when we approach a topic, especially climate tech, and, 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 and that is capital intense, as you, as you rightly mentioned, we need to look at um, you know, the asset that we're actually financing. And what is important to a debt provider, it is important uh, for, the, uh, for the asset to be fungible, it is uh, important for it to have a value over the longer term, it is important for it to be, have a proven technology, and so on and so on. So you're seeing, uh, you know, I, I'm putting a lot of, of buts and ifs into the financing, and, and that is our job as private debt providers. So you need to strike the right balance between having an innovative solution that is capital intensive and finding the right capital source. Now, I'm not saying this is, cannot be provided by private debt. It can, and we're doing that. But you need to have it in the right proportions between different you know, types of capital and sources of capital. And yeah, that's, so striking that right balance for the right uh, maturity of the project, of the technology, is I think that's the, the, the biggest complexity in it. Could you give us an example on what works really well and also what doesn't? Okay, let me, let me f I mean, I, I'm going to ch yeah. choose extremes. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, th that's, uh, if, if you come up to us and say, look, I've got this demo plan of a new technology that is incredible and that will suck carbon out of the atmosphere, and unfortunately it costs 10 million apiece, and it, there is no precedent, then that will be challenging. If you come up to us, and I, I'm thinking of a very concrete example where someone came up and said, look, I found I have an algorithm that is able to predict the lifetime of uh, wind turbines after their you know, feed-in tariff has expired, and I'm actually able to select and pick the, 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 the assets that will make it longer. Um, would you be able to you know, finance the purchase and the operation of those, uh, of those wind plants for, for another few years? And that to us is perfectly palatable. Why? It is, the granularity is correct, the fungibility is correct, um, the, 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 the scrap value is there and, and visible. So you know, for us, that made, uh, made it a very clear case that this was something that was interesting. Thank you very much. Lena, um, now, to, to sum up, what is actually needed to accelerate financing in climate tech? So we actually see that from a research perspective, there's comparatively little knowledge in what is the optimal financing form for different low-carbon technologies. So we need a better understanding there, and also vice versa, how technologies could be designed to make them easier to finance. So to make an example here, more modular technology designs tend to have higher learning rates, and this could make this also more attractive to VC financing. So we need a better understanding for a scientific perspective here, and also a close exchange between researchers and um, the investors. And from a policy perspective, on the other hand, we see that there is uh, a very high focus these days on disclosure requirements and reporting. And although better transparency is definitely good, this might inflate expectations here a bit, because these regulations mainly target to favor green traded securities, which is not always the um, financing choice um, for these investment areas for climate tech. So I would see here that more focus should be put on how public money could help to mobilize private finance, especially in comparatively new technologies such as uh, low carbon fuels or CO2 infrastructure. So thanks for that ride um, through, through, through research, but also the debt side. And maybe a simple key takeaway. I think it's really important that, that entrepreneurs and equity investors up, up, up their game to really take out risk and use really scalable instruments such as debt or public financing to bring things out in an unprecedented way. So that's my key takeaway. Thank you very much for being on stage and sharing your thoughts, and thank you as well. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much.